Greetings, friends in Christ. It is a deep joy to greet you this morning and to welcome you and invite you into this time of worship that we will share with one another. This is a special day in the life of the church, the birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday, a time when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, the followers, and those who were sent after the time that Jesus walked upon this earth. The ones who were given the word, the teachings, the miraculous healings, and the ability to share his good news in his spirit and on his behalf. That day when so many were gathered in one place from all different places of the world in many different languages and tongues. And the love of Christ was there among them. This is the day we celebrate today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hear now these words that call us into this time of worship together. Come, Holy Spirit, like a wind you rush through us. Through you, we are alive. We are awakened with the knowledge that by you, all are created, all are born, all have breath. Through you, we are present and alive. Spirit, you give life to our forms, our unique expressions in this world. Even when all is still, you make your presence known. Spirit, wind, breath of life, through you, we have hope. We are filled with wonder. All your movements on this earth, this life improvisation. We delight in that which we create through you. Through your Holy Spirit power, we have strength. 
you enable us to press on in the face of any difficulty. We are challenged to become even more than we could ever possibly dream. Even that which now seems impossible. And we are aware of each small step. O oh, Spirit of the living God, sustain us. You who are the giver of life, strength, courage, and joy. Light a fire within us through the power of your presence and free us to be all that you call us to be. In praise and gratitude, we worship you this day. Amen. received life through the Spirit of God, compelling us to a bright future full of glory. In this, we know the Spirit of God intercedes for us and helps us in our times of weakness. Together, may we now confess what the Lord has already seen and heard in us. Let us pause now for this moment of silent reflection. Hear these words of our prayer of confession this day. O Spirit of the living God, all nations, tribes, and tongues belong to you. All glory, honor, and praise are due your name. Therefore, we confess to you and before one another that we have been a divided people mother from child, brother from sister, and neighbor from friend and stranger. O God, have mercy upon us and send your power upon this, your church. May we know once more that you have baptized us in one baptism, one faith, one God. Tear down the walls of hatred and the towers of sin in our own lives. And may your spirit descend upon our lives and make us holy and make us one. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. What a blessing to know that God's mercies are new every morning. Those who follow in the way of Christ are a new creation. Everything old is passing away and everything new is becoming possible. Can you feel that? Do you believe that? We are forgiven. 
and we are changed. And we are granted new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. A reading from Holy Scripture in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, from the Voice Translation. When the holy day of Pentecost came, 50 days after Passover, they were gathered together in one place. Picture yourself among the disciples. A sound roars from the sky without warning, the roar of a violent wind, and the whole house where you are gathered reverberates with sound. Then a flame appears, dividing into smaller flames and spreading from one person to the next. All the people present are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they begin speaking in languages they've never spoken, as the Spirit empowers them. Because of the holy festival, there are devout Jews staying as pilgrims in Jerusalem from every nation under the sun. They hear the sound and a crowd gathers, and they are amazed because each of them can hear the group speaking in their native languages. They are shocked and amazed by this. And the pilgrims say, just a minute, aren't all of these people Galileans? How in the world do we all hear our native languages being spoken? Look, there are Parthians here and Medes and Elamites and Mesopotamians and Judeans, residents of Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygians and Pamphylians, Egyptians and Libyans from Cyrene, Romans, including both Jews by birth and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we are each in our own languages hearing these people talk about God's powerful deeds. Their amazement becomes confusion as they begin to wonder, what does this mean? The skeptics say, it doesn't mean anything. They're all just drunk on some fresh wine. As the 12 stood together, Peter shouted to the crowd, Men of Judea and all who are staying here in Jerusalem, listen. I want you to understand, these people are not drunk as you may think. Look, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this isn't drunkenness. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. For hear what God has said. In the last days, I will offer my spirit to humanity as a libation. Your children will boldly speak the word of the Lord. Young ones will see visions and your elders will dream dreams. Yes, in those days I shall offer my spirit to all servants, both male and female, and they will boldly speak my word. And in the heaven above and on the earth below, I shall give signs of impending judgment, blood, fire, and clouds of smoke. The sun will become a void of darkness, and the moon will become blood. Then the great and dreadful day of the Lord will arrive, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be liberated into God's freedom and peace. Friends, this miraculous sign of God's kingdom is astounding. The followers of Jesus are not known as people who drink too much wine, so this fantastic episode requires some other explanation. Unfortunately, it is impossible to comprehend or explain what transpires on Pentecost. But this is not a novelty performance. Rather, it is the foundation of the kingdom of God in that it establishes the church as the place where God moves on the earth through his spirit. They expect a political kingdom, but God moves in people's hearts to transform both individuals and communities. May God bless to our hearts and our understanding this day. 
This reading from God's holy word. Amen. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more, hanging on every word. Just when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. When you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, what we see. Changing everything. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we're leaning into all you are. Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of living God. Come now and breathe upon our hearts. Come now and have your way. Cause when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, what we see. Cause when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. We're changing everything. When you move, you move all our feet. When you
God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Let us pray. O oh God of life and wind and spirit and breath, be with us now as we call to mind your word and what it means for our lives this day. Be with us now as we listen for your still small voice. Amen. Friends, Howard Thurman was an African-American author, a philosopher, a theologian, an educator, and a civil rights leader. He had a notable impact on the civil rights movement and his practices and beliefs and many of his writings were inspiration to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Reverend Thurman was the founder of a racially integrated church, the Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples. It was established in 1944 in San Francisco, California. He was the first African-American Dean of the Chapel at Boston University. Hear this excerpt from one of Reverend Thurman's meditations ones that he used to write for his congregation. It's from his book titled Meditations of the Heart, first published in 1953. This meditation is titled The Seed of the Jack Pine. In a response to a letter of inquiry addressed to a Canadian forester concerning the jack pine, which abounds in British Columbia, the following statement was received. Essentially, you are correct when you say that the jack pine cones require artificial heat to release the seed of the cone. The cones often remain closed for years, the seeds retaining their viability. In the interior of the province, the cones which have dropped to the ground will open at least partly with the help of the sun's reflected heat. However, the establishment of the majority of our jack pine stands has undoubtedly been established following forest fires. Seldom do the cones release their seed while they are on the tree. The seed of the jack pine will not be given up by the cone unless the cone itself is subjected to sustained and concentrated heat. The forest fire sweeps all before it, and there remain but the charred reminders of a former growth and a former beauty. It is then in the midst of the ashes that the secret of the cone is exposed. The tender seed finds the stirring of life deep within itself, and what is deepest in the seed reaches out to what is deepest in life. And the result? A tender shoot gently roots until at last there stands straight against the sky, the majestic glory of the jack pine. Thurman goes on to say, it is not too far afield to suggest that there are things deep within the human spirit that are firmly embedded, dormant, latent, and inactive. These things are always positive, even though they may be destructive rather than creative, but there they remain until our lives are swept by a forest fire. It may be some mindless tragedy 
some violent disclosure of human depravity, or some moment of agony in which the whole country or nation may be involved. The experience releases something that has been locked up within through all the years. If it be something that calls to the deepest things in life, we may, like the jack pine, grow tall and straight against the sky. You have heard the meditation from Thurman, the seed of the jack pine. What an amazing tale of the natural order of things that through the violence of a forest fire, it is then that new life is brought forth. The tender shoots springing from the ground, growing straight and tall until at once they are a full grown pine. What a poignant tale for the time we find ourselves in. For friends, we know that there are fires burning throughout our country at this time. And these are, yes, wrought of some acts of violence, but they are also coming from another message that may be one whose time has come, a seed being planted in this moment the tender shoot of acceptance, of respect, of equality, of love coming forth. We see on the evening news the various tales of cities that are full of protests. And we would be remiss if we simply focused our attention on that and focused our attention on those who were protesting, we are called in this time, my friends, to focus on the reason why. Unfortunately, in recent days, we are all too knowledgeable about the reason why. And it is into this time that we as Christians celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the coming of the Holy Spirit, this miraculous event in the life of Jesus' followers, he had promised them, the advocate as we have spoken of, the paraclete, the one who would companion them, the one who would guide them, the one who would be his very presence with them when he was no longer physically journeying with them. And there they were amidst so many. And in the rush of a wind with flames of fire, suddenly they were all hearing and understanding in their own native language. A message for all the people. A message for all the people. What is the message for all the people in our time? Unfortunately, our recent message is the words, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Here on this Pentecost Sunday, when we celebrate the wind of breath, the breath of God come in spirit form like flames of fire rushing on the wind. And yet there are these times that we find ourselves in when we can't breathe, when one among us can't breathe. How is it that we will help one another to breathe? First, friends, we have to be able to listen. We have to be able to look and to see and to truly acknowledge what is happening around us. We have to acknowledge the ones who have the power to change this. 
so that this will not continue to happen. We cannot continue to witness the death of beloved people among us. And it makes no matter their skin color. These are all children of God. And yet it seems their skin color does matter. It has been this way for a very long time. And I believe the seed being planted in this moment is that this must stop. We all have a right to the God-given gifts that, he, that we have been blessed with. All have the right to simply live, to live out their passions, to live out their gifts, to live out the very lives they have been gifted. We all have the right to breathe. And yet there are those that we witness who have not been able to breathe. What seed is being planted in you this day? And what seed are you aware is being planted in our midst, in the midst of such challenge, in the midst of this time of COVID virus, in the midst of racial tensions, fires flaming across our land? What fire of the spirit burns within you? And what will you do about that? Is there a breath of life that flows through each of us at this time? A breath that offers care and respect and acceptance and embrace a breath that sees the life in each being and honors it fully. Friends, it is only then that each one of us can truly breathe. As I close, I invite you to draw even nearer to God as I offer this prayer today in the name of all those who are on our prayer list, in the name of all those who are coping with the COVID virus in any way, in the name of all those who are working so hard every day to make this a better world, in the name of those who can't breathe and those who no longer have breath because of the violence in our world. I offer it in the name of those who won't be able to fully breathe until something is done to change the hearts of people and to bring each of us together on this planet for the sake of all beings and our whole world. Following my prayer, I invite you to listen to a short music piece that was literally created overnight. It's words inspired from the mouth of my professor and friend, Kirk Byron Jones created by his musically talented son, Jared Jones. As we listen, as we learn together, let us know that when one can't breathe, none of us can. Let us pray. Oh God, our Holy Spirit, you are the restless breath of love that sweeps through the whole world. You move where you will, breaking down barriers, stirring hearts to change and making all things possible. Inspire each one of us to hunger and thirst for the embrace of love and breath for all. Come, O Spirit of God, and sweep through our world, bringing great change. And may the bounty of your goodness be shared more justly, so that all may share in the rich blessings of your creation. And for us, bring transformation in our praying 
and in our living together so that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. Amen. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Spirit of life, breathe for me. We pray now together as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for being with us for this time of worship. We hope our time together has been meaningful for you and gives you a renewed sense of strength for these days as we walk them together. And now hear these words of benediction. May your tongue tingle with the fire of the good news. May your heart open to all the people in all the hot spots and hurts of our world. And when you find yourself bent over by sorrow, walking masked in a lonely or dangerous or over busy day, may you find the spirit's feather on the ground, waiting there to give you the hope you need. Go now in the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.